All right, folks, this is Scott Simone. I'm gonna be performing part three of my self-maintenance. So in front of me today, I have my torque wrench. I got a six millimeter Allen and a T45 Torx. I'm gonna to need to be able to set that torque wrench to 20 Newton meters and 25 Newton meters. Got my oil, crush ring, got my O-ring, some gloves, Couple things here. Uh, went ahead and marked up some bottles. I can see in red, I got their rear wheel drive, and then they also have the transmission. The rear wheel is set at 210 milliliters, and I got the transmission marked at 150. That's going to be two bottles plus 150 uh, for 1.15 liters for the transmission when we get to that. Today, the rear wheel only requires 210 milliliters. When I go ahead and drain this, I'm going to go ahead and measure that. I just want to see what was currently already in the rear wheel drive. And another note here, I'm going to try and do this without having to remove the side case. I went ahead and already kind of pre-mocked this. It looks like I can get to the fill and I can get to the drain no problem. Got the bike up on the Kern Stabby X518. Went ahead and purchased a dishpan mat right here. I'm gonna use that to cover the rear wheel. And then I went ahead and got this vessel that's got this hose and it allows me to close and open the valve. So I'm gonna use that to fill it with the, uh, with the hose there. So we'll give this a try today and see if any of this all comes together. All right, so let's get started. So I removed my watch and my wedding band. And I'm just about ready to get started here. I'm gonna take this slow. Like I said, I'm gonna try and replace the rear wheel gear drive fluid without having to remove the rear case on my 2022 R18B. So I was able to get into that space using a articulating ratchet drive. I already checked with my torque wrench and I'm gonna be able to uh, get in there and torque that as well. I don't need anything special, uh, it appears so far. So you can see I used the, uh, I put that dish uh, mat, uh, wedged it up under the rear tire there. I'm gonna try and capture this fluid. I just wanna measure just to see what was actually in there first. Uh, but if I uh, miss a little bit, I got the pan in place. And then uh, at some point when I pull the drain plug, I'll be putting on some rubber gloves here. So let me get started and let me uh, go ahead and get that uh, the, uh, the, the, the fill plug out first. That's important to make sure that uh, before you drain anything, make sure you can get the fill plug uh, out first because uh, if that is stripped, torqued, whatever, you can't uh, get that fill plug uh, removed, well then you can't fill the drive once you've already drained it. And rather than driving your vehicle or your bike to the mechanic, you are now being towed there or flat bedded. All right, so let me get going here. All right, so I have the six millimeter Allen wrench and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the drain fill first. All right, so the crush ring is still within the drain. So just using a little pick, I'm able to go in there and get that out. So using my T45, I'm going to remove the drain plug at this point. And it looks like I could start to do it by hand. So I'm just going to switch to a different T45 here. And again, I really want to try and capture the fluid. So this is the drain plug. You can see the O-ring. Again, keep in mind, this is the magnetic drain plug. So I'm gonna to wanna to get in there and clean that, inspect it, make sure it's not too chunky with any metal debris, any grinding or breaking of gears. So I'm just gonna get in there with a rag there. Well, I went ahead and cleaned up the drain plug. 
removed the old o-ring i got the new o-ring in there uh you can see the oil uh we're just shy of 200 milliliters looking uh down at the bottom there i'm glad i put the mat uh just to protect the wheel um i'm just gonna go ahead and get that drain plug installed torqued down and then i'm gonna go ahead and fill it up with 210 milliliters all right stand by all right so using my t45 i'm going to hand tighten this in and being extra extra cautious because i don't want to cross thread the drain plug all right so that's about as far it's gonna go i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna torque this down to 20 newton meters i have my torque wrench already set i'm using a t45 again and there you go 20 newton meters. All right, I'm gonna move to filling up the uh, vessel at 210 milliliters. I'll go ahead and measure that out and I'll get that in place so that we could fill this. Okay, so I went ahead and measured out 210 milliliters, which is going to be used for the rear drive. And this is the BMW recommended oil. Huge difference in color comparison if you actually look at this. So what I'm going to go ahead is I'm going to go ahead and pour that into this funnel that I already put in place. I don't know if that's very clear, but I did go ahead and protect the rear tire just in case it gets a little messy. So stand by while I go ahead and fill up the rear drive. Folks, so I measured out 210 milliliters. Go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and pour this in real slow because uh, I don't want to overcome the rate of the funnel. And that appears to be working well. Okay. We have to think about Mother Earth. I'm going to go ahead and capture the old oil and I'm going to go ahead and drop that off at my local gas station who uh, takes oil and recycles it. All right, folks, so I went ahead and torqued that to 25 newton meters. Um, just going to go ahead and clean up and uh, this looks like this is all said and done. So just to recap. Uh, changing the rear wheel drive uh, without removing the rear case. Uh, look, it, it can be done. Uh, you just got to be extra cautious when uh, filling. I found that this tip uh, in conjunction with the funnel with the hose, uh, that worked best. I was able to control the rate at which I'm uh, uh, pouring the fluid in. I already went ahead and set uh, 150 milliliters for when I uh, go ahead and replace the transmission fluid. Uh, Tool-wise, as I said, six millimeter uh, Allen. Uh, you're going to need a drive, also a T45, and then one thing I'm just adding is uh, that pick. The pick will be used to go ahead and pull that that crush washer out. Um, the dish mat that worked really well. This is just a rubber dish mat. Uh, it's real malleable, allows me to tuck it up underneath the wheel there. And uh, I say all in, probably, you know, without the filming and everything. Uh, this is probably a 40 minute job. I'd recommend rubber gloves and uh, lots of rags. All right. Take care. Hope this helps. Be good.